Welcome to episode five of What Sarah Said. I'm Sarah Houghton, and today's question comes from Amanda, and she writes, okay, I know this may be forcing you to speculate a bit, but honestly, where do you see the line being drawn for most libraries when it comes to this ridiculous drama over eBooks and publishers concerning limited copies and accessibility in particular? We really aren't good at standing up for ourselves, but this is getting insane. I looked at our OverDrive account the other day, and it was very common to see over 100 to 200 holds on 10 to 20 ebook copies of a particular title. Unbelievable. And off of that, okay, it's a two-part question. Is that acceptable? Of course it is. Uh, if we don't draw a line, how badly are libraries going to suffer from being ebook publisher roadkill? Are we really just going to let our customers and our organizations become victims of greed and lack of forethought? Wow, okay. You guys know, you get me started on ebooks and I can go on for an hour, but I will make this as brief as possible. Where do I see the line being drawn over access to e-copies e in terms of them being limited numbers of copies and accessibility? Um, I agree with Amanda that we're not very good at standing up for ourselves, uh, but I do think that we've gotten a little bit better in, in recent months about standing up for accessibility of titles based on ADA standards, based on cross-device compatibility. Um, in terms of the limited copies, you know, one copy, one user model, I don't know that that's necessarily the wrong model. I mean, it's it's one that, that harkens back toward the print, but there are things from print that we're asking them to adhere to as well. So I don't know, this is, a, this is the Wild West time for eBooks. And so I'm not gonna rule out the, the one copy, one user model as, as not working yet. I, I think that remains to be seen. Um, however, what you mentioned about it being very common to see, you know, 10, 10 holds on every single copy of something, well, that's a question of allocation. So I know in our consortium, we've got automatic holds um, fulfillment at, at five holds per copy. And that means we're spending a lot of money on holds fulfillment, but that also means that we're buying lots of copies of things that people want a lot of. In our old consortium that we belong to, it was common to see titles with one to two year waiting lists for, for a, a popular title. And that's not meeting user demand. It's not meeting user needs for these titles. And so I think you have to ask how much are you allocating to purchasing digital content versus physical and what's the return on investment? And if your holds lists really are that long, that means there's more demand than you're able to meet with your current budget allocation. So it does, it does warrant a, another look. Um, and your, your second part in terms of how badly your library is going to suffer from being ebook and publisher roadkill, uh, I, I don't think that we are. I think that just as we saw with the Patriot Act, we're just starting to see libraries and librarians stand up, do a little fist pump, get angry, get excited, say, this is what we think the future looks like. And we wanna be a part of it and we want you guys to be a part of it with us, publishers and authors and vendors. Let's come together and find a solution that works for everyone. And so I don't think we're, we're gonna be roadkill. I think if we continue to accept products that are locked down from companies that are not transparent, or that outright lie to us, uh, or we continue to accept uh, content that, that doesn't work across different platforms, that, that has tons of digital rights made, uh, management laden in, inside of it, I think that's where we, we veer off into roadkill territory. So as long as we continue to stand up for the ethics and the principles that librarians hold dear, you know, open access to information for all, long-term preservation of information, accessibility to information. Um, as long as we, we listen to those core values that were um, created, you know, uh, 100 years ago or more, I think that, that we're in good, sh a, a good shape to be able to move forward in a positive way with digital content. It's not all doom and gloom. There are positive models being created. Um, and, and when I often point to is the Internet Archives Open Library Project, and I encourage you all to go take a look at that as one possible model of a successful future for digital content for both libraries and consumers, one that is transparent, one that is open, uh, and one that is user-driven uh, instead of uh, corporate greed-driven. So uh, with that, thank you so much for your questions, Amanda, and I hope you all will tune in for our next episode of What Sarah Said. Thanks for tuning in to this one.